What's up, everybody? Good morning. Welcome to a Tuesday edition of Morning Scone, presented by Brock, the Baton Rouge Orthopedic Clinic. Got my workout in again this morning. Uh, seven straight days, day seven of the 100, uh, the morning meltdown 100. So, anyway, let's see what y'all getting into today. Um, official Bo Pelini back at LSU. So, a few weeks ago on the show, kind of hinted that a name, then the name got out there, and so now it's official. So, uh, bottom line is when um, <clears throat> when it looked like Dave Aranda was taking the UNLV job and Dave Aranda was taking the UNLV job. Uh, Ed started vetting possible candidates. Bo was the first guy on his list, so he started calling a lot of folks you know, in the industry that he kind of leans into for uh, uh, <clears throat> that he respects and looks for looks to for advice. So. And he kept getting, th- Bo was, was who he was asking about, and he kept getting thumbs up. So really it was just a matter of making it work. There, um, I haven't gotten this full story yet, uh, but I'm working on it. There's There was some, one of the other reasons there was a hold of it, something with the SEC. I don't know what yet, but maybe we'll find out. But it was something with the SEC that um, that had to go thumbs up. But uh, anyway, but Bo's back at LSU. Uh, yesterday, Bo posted on Twitter, I got thank you to Youngstown State. And if you saw it, he posted the letter and at the bottom. He had the Youngstown State logo and the LSU logo. And apparently, Bo went right back to like 2007 because he used the Flying Tunches logo. It was like, oh, Bo, come on. You know, like with the swirly hurricane thing and the two Tunches coming out of it. It's like, Bo, that thing's been retired since you left. So <laughs> just fix that and we'll be good. Uh, Kevin Gleason, good morning. Uh, Stephen Miller, good morning. Mike Gravois, good morning. Tommy Vienendahl, Luis Aleman, Charlie Cavell, Charles Waltman, good morning. Chuck Bro, good morning. Um, as always, shout out to Brock, folks. Uh, please uh, like their page or tag in this post. Chris Keller, let's hear the people complain about Bo. I don't get it, Chris. And you know, my... Um, I'll get more guys on, too, to talk about it. But yesterday, I had both Marlon Favorite and Derry Beckwith on AFR. If you miss Derry, go listen to that. Spent 30 minutes with him. Again, he was middle linebacker, played all three years for Bo, and then played 2008 as well. Um, great SEC middle linebacker, all SEC middle linebacker. Um, told stories. Um, answered basically every question you'd have. Will he and Ed coexist? Does LSU have the personnel to run a 4-3? Will Bo's defense from 2007 work in a 2020 college football? Like every question you could have, I asked Tadari, and his answers were awesome. So, um, big fave, strongly endorsed it too. Uh, When the guys who played for him are telling you this is an awesome hire, like – need to pay attention because um, not everybody loves the coaches they played for uh, Jason Aguilar what's up Chuck bro up Chuck up Chuck up Chuck uh, Kevin Gleason Ricardo Rodriguez and Brock rock indeed uh, Jeff McKithen good morning uh, Ricky Roche Zachary Leger good morning Pat Huseman good morning Dylan Landry good morning my dude Brian Wynn, uh, Jessica Trum, welcome back, Bo. I, I hope um, I hope most LSU fans are feeling more on board with this. Look, the other thing too is Ed Ogeron has always wanted to run a four three. That's that's what he is at his core. As a defensive lineman, he wants big, strong, fast, physical defensive linemen. You know beating double teams and pressuring the quarterback and that that's what he wants. Um and Bo's gonna do that. So um let's roll. I'm pumped about it. Brian Penton, good morning Matt from Georgia headed to Atlanta. There you go, Brian. Safe travels today. Matthew Rogilio, good morning. Bubba Tatum, morning Matt FYI. 
Peach Bowl is re-airing on the SEC Network right now if anybody wants to start their day on a happy note. Well, Bubba, start my day on a happy note every day with my eyes open. But, very good point. Uh, boy, that was a, a behind whipping. Uh, Brad Crowder, what's up, dude? Uh, y'all, please hit the share button if you've not done so yet. Appreciate that as always. Let's see, Phyllis Chang, don't feel too bad, bro. Your parody Twitter account is way better than Faux Polini. So, Phyllis, um, not my parody account. Uh, I don't run that account. And uh, Faux Polini is one of the best followers on Twitter. I, someone was, uh, I mentioned this yesterday on the show. Um, if, uh, if you don't follow Faux Polini, it's a guy who started a Bo Polini parody account, and it's it's all satire, and it's hilarious, and it's it's a really, really good creative Twitter account to follow. It has over 600,000 followers. So, <clears throat> and not people that are LSU fans, people that are all over college football. So, point is, you don't hire Bo Pelini because he's got a parody Twitter account, but even that, think about the reach that you'll have outside of games, also just because of that account. You got 600,000 people that follow that account. So whenever something gets retweeted, or tweeted from that account, it gets retweeted, shared, like, like think about the reach. You know, a million people all gonna know about LSU's defensive coordinator because of that account, you know what I mean? How many people knew who the coach at Youngstown State was before Bo went there, you know? So, um, anyway. Hey, Mama Ford, good morning. Um, Kevin Gleason, is that a burger I'm shake in disguise? It is not. This is uh, mixed berries, uh, raw unfiltered honey, organic uh, Greek yogurt, um, the Mayan superfoods, hemp, bus seed, chia seed, and cocoa nibs. Um, and a scoop of protein and water. Shelby Dante, good morning. Josh Long, yo. <clears throat> Stephen Miller, with two quarterbacks on the roster, another two coming. Do you think LSU brings in another quarterback? Um, hey, looking, bro. I'll tell you that much. If the, if they can find, if you're asking. Okay, Jordan, I see your question. Let me get to it. I just want to make sure it didn't. He said, why is Youngstown State, why has Bo not been hired away from Youngstown State? Okay. Um, <clears throat> um, if, if LSU, LSU will have space, and if you're asking, will they recruit another high school quarterback? No. But if there is a grad transfer available that can play right away and give them depth that wants to come and compete, they would look at that. Now, to the question about why has Bo been at Youngstown State so long? Who cares? Maybe he's from Youngstown, Ohio. He was on staff with his brother. He had made a bajillion dollars and got a bunch of buyout money from Nebraska. Maybe he was super content to coach at Youngstown State. Maybe part of it is there are some schools that felt Bo was untouchable. So if you're Bo Pelini at that point in your career and you're a head coach, you're at Youngstown State, your brother's on your staff, you're in your hometown, you got enough money, you got a really good situation. If you're going to jump, it, maybe it's for a Power 5 head coaching job or a major Power 5 defensive coordinator gig and you can be super selective. Well, what if you didn't want to jump until a job came along that's the defending national champion that's going to pay you $2.3 million a year, and you can't say no to that. You know what I mean? Like, similar with Dave Aranda. Why did it take Dave Aranda so long to get a head coaching job? Well, he could be selective. He didn't have to take the Troy job, you know? He could wait until a really good job came along. Um, and he did. So, let's just say Bo didn't have sniffs before. Who knows? Maybe he was really content in life. Uh, Cheryl Wilkes, good morning. The point is, man, there are so many. There are so many reasons people 
stay where they are or move or like everybody's motivated by different things in life and and that's like we forget that sometimes when talking about coaches but it's true uh, Kelly Gross good morning Brock Pendarvis <laughs> Like the Dairy Beckwith interview, thank you. Shelby Kelly, Shelly Malawsaw, Trivia Carter, good morning. This is going fast, going fast, going fast, going fast. Stephen Brooking, excited about Faux Polini, no doubt. Uh, Kevin Langlane, good morning. Dustin Lassiter, Matt, love the hire. Don't know if there's anybody else out there that was a good fit as Bo. I agree. Tyler Hales, good morning. So, <clears throat> um, <clears throat> excuse me. So, um, point is, like, with with any anything in life where people might might move for a career, like, you have to weigh it. What if what if you're an engineer and you got offered a job in Northern California? Well, what if all of your family's here and the cost of living there is more? And the money isn't that much different, and you're not sure you want to move, and your kids are in school, and you don't want to move to the West Coast. It's like, and so you stay. You know what I mean? Like, there's lots of reasons why why people professionally do what they do, stay or go. Or, I mean, it's it's true for coaches also. Mark McCarter, what was LSU's defense rated the last two years? I need to go see what the final rankings were, <clears throat> but they weren't good. I mean, it was top top 40. Bo's defense is each of his three years in Baton Rouge, third nationally in total defense. They were top 10 in every major category all of his three years. Those defenses were awesome. Tommy Burton, hello from Spain. Uh, Brandon Scott, Jason Gibson, Cassidy Russo, Caleb Clark, Travis Garadell. Good morning, good morning, good morning. Um, is Bo going to be spelled B-E-A-U-X this time around? I hope not. Um, we don't need to E-A-U-X everything. I like it. I love the go. I lo don't get me wrong. I love it. We just don't need to do it to everything. Let's see. <clears throat> Charlie Cavell. Jim Trussell was... Jim Trussell was the head coach at Youngstown State before he got the Ohio State job. I don't think he was the. Pre I don't think he went back to Youngstown. He's the president there now. But did he go back as the head coach? See, I don't think Trestle cool. did he go back to Youngstown State after Ohio State? Uh, no, he did not. Charlie, you wrong, bruh. You wrong, bruh. See? He got fired at Ohio State and then he spent one year as a consultant with the Indianapolis Colts and then went as president at Youngstown State. See, bruh? You don't know who the coach was at Youngstown State before Bo Pelini. That's my point, man. But we all know now. We know who it was. <clears throat> <laughs> uh, Stephen Miller, greatest alum from Youngstown State is Al Bundy. Like in real life or the character Al Bundy? I never watched Married with Children. And by the way, <clears throat> I don't think Bo's defense are going to be top five next year. If you're playing a complimentary brand to an offense that's going to go and try to score 40 a game and run 80 plays, you're not going to be top five. So. I'm good with that. Just be good enough. Bubba Tatum, Courtney Brown, John Boudreau. That's not a Terrio coffee cup. <laughs> That's so funny. Erica even called him up. She's like, why did? Why is he... What is he doing with that coffee cup? Like, we know what he's doing. This is pretty good. Tyler Hales. DeMarco Murray is Oklahoma's running back coach now. Yep. Made that, official, that higher official yesterday. Teeny bean. Um, let's see. Do you think Bo will move Jacoby to inside linebacker? I do not think he'll play inside linebacker. No. Um, 
You can't say Coco on Warren Scone. I don't know what that means, Charlotte. Are you talking about like the Coco Nibs? The thing in my smoothie? Stephanie Cortez, good morning. Brandon English. I love the Pelini hire. Can't wait to see the big guys blowing offensive lines up. I mean, especially when you think about the guys they've signed in this class, like Jaquel and Roy and Jacoby and Guillory. I mean, those guys are prototypical 4-3 defensive tackles. I mean, prototypical monstrous 4-3 tackles. So, I agree. Matthew Corley, good morning. Ricky Roche, good morning. I remember Bo's defenses. They were nasty and physical. Yes, they were. Fun to watch. I remember being bummed when he left for Nebraska. I don't understand the criticism. The, I think the criticism is rooted in the fact that Bo's personality, some people find abrasive. But I have news for you. It's the same thing with Ed in game like Ed is a is a intense guy and he'll yell and scream and curse and that's great I mean the the roll tide what bleep you who what else means didn't love that you know what I mean and I don't think it's any great secret that in making the this bow higher and personality wise Bo being sort of the anti Aranda it and tells you what Ed O'Gron was coveting in, in this hire, personality-wise. Shout out to Brock, Baton Rouge Orthopedic Clinic. They're tagged in the post. If you'd like them, we'd appreciate that. Matthew Wheeler, Brandon Ray, Justin Beard, Jordan Grace. I was just curious what others thought. I get it. I'm with you. Just wanted to hear your opinion on it. Oh, was that about Bo not getting a job in the you know at Youngstown State? That's why. Or since Youngstown State. Sean Nolan, hey Deborah Todd, good morning. Uh, I would say he likes the weather here, but I doubt it unless he likes the rain. It's better than cold snow and sleet. Jason, did you see the championship game between Bryce Young and DJ OMG, the two recruits for Clemson, Alabama? Dear Lord, I did not. Uh, Ray Wright, good morning, Ray. Brandon Deville, I had commented and said. Peyton Ramsey, quarterback from Indiana, has entered the transfer portal. Threw over 2,500 yards, 13 touchdowns this past team, this season. Brandon, I, I'll stay pretty consistent on this. If there's a quarterback that has experience as a Power 5 starter that wants to come in and compete, not just be handed a job, like... Some of those quarterbacks might only want to go to a spot where they, they don't have a starter and they could step in immediately and play. Um, and that's fine. But if if there's a transfer that has starting experience that want to come in and compete for a job with Miles Brennan, I think LSU would, would welcome that. Had Shea on yesterday. Um, and he kind of went through the numbers and does not expect LSU to sign 25. Expects him to sign 23 on signing day a week from tomorrow. So that means there'd be two spots open for a late ad, a grad transfer. Um, the same thing happened a couple of years ago when they added Burrow and Cole Tracy. That worked out pretty well. So I think they're also going to really try to add a linebacker, a, a transfer linebacker if possible. Alexander Diaz, good morning. Um, Chad Dupuy, good morning. Jason, we have six quarterbacks on the roster. Not six scholarship quarterbacks, because you've got Brennan, Peter Parrish, and then the two freshmen. You've got four scholarship quarterbacks in the roster. Buddy Legnon, good morning. Hey, Kirk Taylor, listening to the Nebraska media lose their minds. And this has been hilarious, saying stuff like, this is a terrible hire, this won't work with Coach O, can we get Woodward to schedule Nebraska immediately? Nebraska is interesting to me because if you just go through their the history, <clears throat> of course, historically great program. If you remember back in two thousand one, you know Osborne retires, Frank Solich takes over. They go to the national championship game in 01, despite giving up sixty to Colorado. They 
they go to the 0-1 championship game, they lose to Miami. In 2002, Solich goes 9-3, and they fire him. Nine-win season, they fire him. They bring in Bill Callahan. Callahan's going to go to the spread. Complete dumpster fire. And Nebraska has not been relevant since. I shouldn't say they've not been relevant because Bo made them relevant again. Uh, Bo never won fewer than nine games. He won his half of the Big 12 twice. And in Nebraska's first year in the Big 10, he won his share, his half of the Big 10. Never won fewer than nine games. And it's the most relevant Nebraska's been in 20 years. I don't understand why they hate him. It's... Um, <clears throat> Bo feuded famously with that athletic director, Sean, Sean Eichhorst, if you remember. <clears throat> um, and that's why ultimately he left, got fired, whatever you want to say. But, um, you know. Guy's been a good coach. He's a really good defensive coach. And I don't think Nebraska wants this LSU smoke. They do not want the smoke. Uh, Mark, can Zion win in Cleveland tonight? Yeah. Greg Lane, good morning. Steven, also Ed mentioned that Munoz is still a possible candidate for passing game coordinator at LSU. That's interesting. When did he mention that? Wow. That would be fascinating. Uh, Brandon Scott, met Derry in the Dutchtown subway a few years back. Dude secretly bought oh, bought my lunch A plus dude. He, Brandon Derry Beck with is an A plus guy. He's an awesome guy. One of my favorite people. Um, you know when years ago when I started working out attraction initially and so Derry had finished playing. He Derry um, boy Derry was was a great linebacker and he had a third round draft grade um, from the from the draft advisory people when after his senior year in two thousand eight. Went to the combine. Nobody would clear him on physical because of his knees. So he he just he played on bum knees his whole career at LSU and was still awesome and couldn't couldn't pass physical. Had a, a cup of coffee with the Chargers. Played pretty well, but ultimately just knees couldn't keep up. So had to hang him up. Um, but man, awesome guy. I don't know that I've ever heard Derry say a, a negative thing about anybody. Just, you know, awesome people. <laughs> um, Bill Oglesby, good morning. Mark, Taysom Hill has been crowned the heir to the throne and DeBreeze retires in two more years. I disagree with that, Mark. I think they're just trying to keep Taysom content, um, leaving that possibility open so that he wouldn't try to go sign else, elsewhere. Uh, Jason Gibson loved the hire when I first heard the rumors of hiring Bo. I was super excited. I love his defense defense mind. I agree completely. Uh, how do you feel about Taysom Hill as a future NFL starting dual threat quarterback? Don't like it. Um, I think we, you know, flip our lids every time Taysom makes an amazing play, and he is an amazing athlete. But as an every down starter in the NFL, I don't like it because a giant part of his game is running, and every year at BYU he was hurt <clears throat> because of that. And he's also 28, 29. Uh, Taysom Hill is 29 years old. So a future starting quarterback at 31? No, I'm good. Um, I love Taysom the athlete. Want him on the roster. Want him to be that Swiss Army Knife player. But starter? No. Ben Giat, Stephen Bro, good morning. Craig Schilling, LSU finished 31st in total defense. Gotcha. Um, Ken the Stewart, good morning. Thomas Chapman. <clears throat> Stephanie Cortez, let's wait, see if he's worthy of the EAUX. People do it no matter what, Stephanie. I mean, I'm with you. I just... <clears throat> It feels like it would be more impactful if we just used it in a little more temperate manner. Kenneth Stewart, does Miles have a legitimate shot as starter, or is O not sold on him? How about Max Johnson's chances? Uh, does Miles have a legitimate legitimate shot? Yeah, um, I think as it stands now, Miles will be your day one starter. 
Um, and I've told you all this before. Their their question on Miles is his complete and total buy-in. Um, Miles loves to hunt and fish, and he's got a, a some a girl he's been dating for a long time, and that's great. Like I say, it's great to have balance in life, but <clears throat> what separates good players from elite players at this level is the guys that have complete and total buy-in. They're film junkies. This is what they do, you know. <clears throat> and you know, in the NFL, you have an actual off season. You, know, you have four months to to get away and do all those things. Um, and then during the season, you're pot committed. In college, it's a 12 month deal because it's it's workouts, it's classes, it's film study, and so much of it you have to do on your own. Um, and maybe it'll change for Miles if he knows he's the guy. But I think that that's their their hesitation is. You know, if Miles isn't pot committed to being the starting quarterback at LSU, would be an awesome. And you know, is there someone else? Is there a backup plan? <clears throat> Excuse me. Let's see. Ah, uh, real life Ed O'Neill is an alumni of Youngstown State. Got it. Thanks. Thanks. Kevin Gleason, Married with Children. So, Kevin, when I was a kid, my parents wouldn't let us watch Married with Children, Seinfeld, <clears throat> The Simpsons. Um, so, yeah, never watched it as a kid. Parents wouldn't let us. We were prudes, man. Super sheltered. Dylan Landry, hearing anything about Saban NCA violations, maybe fake news. Um, I mean, I hear a lot about Saban NCA violations. Never seems to get popped. Always got someone else in line to take the fall. Nobody's better than him. Why do you think Kirby and Jimbo and those guys have done so well recruiting. They learn the secrets. <clears throat> Let's see. Mark, which take on Gentry taking Zion out of the game after scoring 17 points in three minutes? Talked about that last week, Mark. Uh, I hated it, but that's not a Gentry thing. That's a Pelicans medical staff thing. And he even said the exact same after the game. Uh, so there's no way it would have taken him out. <clears throat> um, but the medical staff's made that decision, and I don't think... And I I don't endorse it. It's a 19-year-old. Let him let him go run the floor for four minutes. It's, it's fine. Jonathan Foru, good morning. Uh, Kevin, what years was Bo here? 05, 06, 07. Three years, and then he went to Nebraska to be the head coach. He was there for seven years, and out of the last five, he's been at Youngstown State. Think about this. I don't remember getting frustrated with Bo's defenses giving up third and Chavers or giving up big plays like Aranda's defenses often did. <clears throat> it's true. Um, i trying to think of what the worst game would have been in that stretch defensively, 05, 06, 07. I mean, the, the 07 team had injuries, and obviously they had the triple overtime games. The the Arkansas game, the 50-48 to 48 game in triple overtime, would probably be the one. Um, 07, they gave up some yards and some points for sure, but most of that was because they were banged up. But anyway. <clears throat> hey, Cole Pierce, good morning. Uh, late start with a sick wife. Hope she feels better, man. A lot of gunk going around again. Everett email, good morning. Uh, Glenn Castle, what's up, Glenn? Good morning. Stephen Miller, 65-18 and 18 is the record of the four teams that beat LSU this season. Three mid-majors plus USC, solid comp. Also saw seven teams on LSU schedule projected to make the tourney field. Willie Wade, man, God knows what he's doing making the schedule. Um, good number. John David Mathern, morning, Scone. Think Bo might stick around LSU like Venables has at Clemson. Thoughts? Just hate having a hot, the hot next head coaching prospect that we have to be replacing. Well, 
I'll tell you this, John David. The flip side is you could have a crappy coach that nobody wants. And that's kind of the perspective. I don't think you hire... You, I don't think you ever hire <clears throat> thinking, I'm going to hire a guy that's never going to get away. I think your approach in hiring has to be, I want to get the best and give them everything they need to be successful here. And as long as they're successful, we'll compensate them adequately and fairly and competitively and hope that they stay for as long as they can, uh, as long as we can keep them. I mean, I think that has to be your approach. So while I understand your point, like name another Brent Venables. And even Venables, remember, got run out at Oklahoma. Bob Stoops fired Brent Venables, which is why I went to Clemson. Um, so, um, I hear you, but that's also just, that's, that's an outlier. That's an exception to the rule. The rule in coaching is it's a really transient profession, and guys are typically on the move looking for the next best opportunity. Um, and and maybe Bo maybe Bo does stay for a while this time, uh, you know maybe he's you know he showed he stayed in Nebraska for seven years and Youngstown stayed for five years, um, you know maybe he does stick around, you know but I'm also curious at, at 51 does he want to be a head coach in a Power Five again and you know if he let's say he does three seasons here um, and LSU is exceptional again does does he start to get sniffs again for a head coach maybe. Maybe. Brian Ashcraft, Brady Beacom. But then again, remember, he's making $2.3 million now. There aren't many group of five schools that are going to be able to hire him, so it's going to have to be someone that's, that's a, you know, power five that's committed to making him a head coach again. Frank Perniciaro, good morning. Charlie Cavill. Okay, John Heacock and Eric Wolford were after Trestle and prior to Bo. Charlie, I know you had to go look that up. Don't even pretend like you knew that off the top of your head. <clears throat> Steve, okay, Ed mentioned this morning, which, okay, good to know. All right, so he was on um, uh, he was on OTB today. Okay, cool, good to know. Thank you. Uh, Kyle Hagler, good morning. When's the next Bourbon Dictionary? Uh, glad you asked. Need to book that. I'm actually on a bourbon podcast tonight with uh, Chase Parham, who is the Ole Miss uh, Rebel Grove. Uh, he and Neil McCready run Rebel Grove, and uh, they're both big bourbon guys. So Chase does a bourbon podcast and asked me to be on it tonight. We're going to review uh, Russell Reserve, so look forward to that tonight. Ryan, Ryan Connor, what's up, Lil C? Leroy Blanchard. Hey, Jessica Sanchez. Good morning, Johnny Clark, Jason Aguilar. What do you think? Better linebacker in their prime, Beckwith or Devin White? Oh, my God. Devin White's the best linebacker in the history of LSU. Um, this guy was a fifth overall pick. Uh, Devin White. I mean, the answer, if you ask me who was the best, Devin White or anybody, the answer is Devin White. Mark Demeling, good morning. Kenneth Stewart, does Miles have a legitimate shot or is Coach O still not sold up? Definitely got a legitimate shot. Uh, Kevin Gleason, wait, has Drew Brees made his decision? He is not. Said at the Pro Bowl that he's going to take about a month, but he's going to play. Julie Michelle McKee, good morning. John Boudreaux, why are so many wanting to replace Miles when we haven't seen him play? Give the kid a chance. Um, John, I'll tell you this much. A lot of that conversation is internal. Um, you know, even Ed Ogeron in, in that interview last week with OTB said, you know, Miles is a starter for now, but he's going to have to earn it. I mean, it's... Again, a lot of that's internal. Which, which kind of is your answer. Um, you know, the fact that they're that the staff is pursuing a grad transfer is is your answer. Um, Stephen Miller, how do you feel about print media trying to compare this bow hire to what his defense ranked at Youngstown State? I have no idea what his defense did at Youngstown State, and um, I would not make that comp at all. Um, I have no idea what type of player you recruit in the FCS. I have no type, no idea the level of competition. I don't even know if he's like in a league. Do you win your conference? I have no idea. So I'm really not interested in that. And I haven't seen that, but I'm not saying that they haven't. I just, that I don't care. Uh, Kevin White, good morning. Kevin White, I like the hoodie. Thank you, bro. If I did this, Eric, Erica, would, uh, Erica would fall over if she saw me do this. 
Josh Long, I was never allowed to watch The Simpsons. Me too. My parents said because they were rude, because like uh, Bart called his dad Homer, like because he was rude to his parents, we couldn't watch The Simpsons. <laughs> Dana, my parents didn't let me watch Pee Wee's Playhouse. Pee Wee was creep. He was a creeper, no doubt. Um. I'm going quickly here, y'all. Uh, Kevin White, I missed it. You like or dislike the bow hire? Love the bow hire. Love the bow hire. Um, Kirk Taylor, the Troy game. Troy, 2008, that was after bow. That was the Malvato experiment. That was Doug Mallory, uh, Bradley Dale Pivato. Uh, Kevin White, can't rank Nebraska D with LSU D talent. True, also different leagues. Um... I'm just, you know, a lot of, I remember when LSU hired Kevin Steele, a lot of LSU fans flipped out because they remember that Orange Bowl where where Clemson gave up 70 to West Virginia. And the deeper you, you put, peel back the layer, you realize, well, there was like a couple of fumble scooping scores, a couple of short field touchdowns, there was a pick six, you know, maybe a return for a touchdown. The defense did give up 70. And even still, that was just an individually bad day. And Steele's a really good defensive mind, defensive coordinator, and he's got to kick the ass at Auburn. You know what I mean? Um, so I would caution you from looking at a, a small sample size and extrapolating that and making that seem like a, a bigger thing than it is. Keith Rosenbach, good morning. Jeff McKithen, what's up, man? See, John David Mathern, 05 Georgia Championship game was rough. Oh, God. Hmm. Have I ever told you all my story about that game? <clears throat> I'll do this real quick. Catholic was playing West Monroe in the state semifinals in West Monroe the Friday night before the LSU Georgia SEC Championship game. My buddy Dave and Dana, who y'all have seen pop on here, teeny Dana, I want to say that, that's Dana. Um, they were married, living in Monroe. Dana was in pharmacy school. So me, Ryan Condon, uh, who else, uh, my sister, and I think maybe my sister's friend, I think that's who was with us. We drive to Monroe Friday to watch the state semifinals. Catholic loses to West Monroe because, of course... Sleep, wake up the next morning to drive to Atlanta, just straight across 20 to Atlanta. Right when we get across the state line in Alabama, blowout, flat tire. We're in my parents' Suburban. I have a tire iron, and the, the, um, the nut was stripped. I mean, when I tell you, like, I had the tire iron on it, and I'm, my body weight, I'm standing on the tire iron, and it wouldn't turn. Like it, I, we needed like a hydraulic jack, to like to blow the thing off. Hi, bud. Anyway, we called emergency, you know, roadside service, and we're sitting on the side of the road for like two hours, three. And now it's like, okay, we're gonna miss the game, you know, because games uh, four o'clock, five o'clock, whatever it is. Gotcha. Uh, <laughs> what? Me. So finally, um, okay, bud. All right. So finally, roadside assistance comes. They're able to to get the um, get the tire changed, um, and I go to start the car. Engine's dead. I had the flashers on. We're on the side of the road. I had the flashers on for like three hours, so the car wouldn't turn over. Battery's dead. I'm like, oh my god. So I flag down the roadside assistance guy. Hey. So he comes back and and jumps us. Well, in, in the process of jumping us, his truck dies. His battery died. I'm like, man, look. He's like, go, just go. I, I can get. So he was able to radio help. So we we're able to go from there, like on I-20, like right at the Alabama state line, Mississippi Alabama state line. We go into. I mean, I pulled into the Georgia Dome garage. We like, I threw on a clean shirt, put on some deodorant, ran into the stadium, and like I'm sitting in my seat just in time for the national anthem. I mean, I don't know. I, my parent, the Suburban had a governor of like 100 on it. I must have been hitting that thing like every five seconds. I probably, I mean, just to get, and it took that just to get to the game in time. 
So we get there, finally sit in my seat, national anthem, we made it, okay. And then LSU proceeds to get their head kicked in by Georgia. It's like this was the worst, like, 24 hours. So of a sports fan's life. This is terrible. Watch both of my teams get the crap kicked out of them in, in significant games. Get stuck on the side of the road in the interstate in Alabama for three hours. Oh my god. And then we're all so broke as a joke. We had like a hotel room, like a, I don't know, some motel like attached to a, a waffle house. Like it was six people staying in the room. <laughs> oh god. Anyway. Good times. Not really. Um, Jason Aguilar, I think, will end up getting Birch. What do you think? I have no idea what high school kids are going to do, but I think it's a really good thing that he spent his own money to come down here for a visit. I'd love to get him. I think he'd be awesome in his defense. Uh, Charlie Venables, Bud Foster, didn't seem to be head coaching material. That's why they stayed coordinators. Pelini's been a head coach at a Power 5 school and successful. Yeah, I agree with all that. I'm with you, Charlie. Ken the Stewart is Curtis Johnson, the mixed passing game coordinator. I know that's who O wants. I don't know if um, if CJ wants to leave the NFL. Patrick Wong, what's up, man? Patrick Wong, you'll see Patrick over at Ichiban, the Essen location. So get on by for lunch today. Tell Patrick what's up. He, Pat, I keep now Patrick. I can't remember if it was you or if it was Ronnie or a collab, but I'm fairly certain. Fairly certain it was Patrick Wong who created the Moscona Roll. I'm fairly certain that it was Patrick. Because uh, when we created the Moscona Roll, they were like, we want to do a roll named after you. And so I went there one day, and he, I, I'm, I'm, all, Patrick, I'm almost certain it was you. It may have been Ronnie, but I think it was you. And there was like five or six rolls. Just think they just created this. Here, like, try, try all these, tell us which one you want. And I tried, to, I was like, boom, that's it. So that is the guy right there, Patrick Wong, the creator of the Moscona Roll, watching Morning Scone. Go to Ichiban. Uh, John Michael Giles, watching you on the road to Rockwall, Texas. Thank you, John Michael. Appreciate that. Lance Bradford, what's up, Lance? Interesting that Jordan Birch and his mom were on campus this weekend. I agree. Um, Charles Moranto, good morning. Stephen Brooking, did I miss the answer of Carl Pelini's getting the Youngstown State job? I don't know, Stephen. I'm not sure what um, what Youngstown has uh, has done. How quick does Bo make into kids' homes now? Now, I mean, he better be recruiting now today. Um, you got eight days till signing day. Week from tomorrow. Let's roll. Oh, that's another one. Kirk Taylor parents didn't let me watch Beavis and Butthead. But I did watch wrestling. I was a big wrestling kid. Um, Keith Rosenbach when my church does Facebook live there's a button asking if you want to send push notifications when live videos are posted can you do those so I don't have to keep checking Facebook live Keith I thought I thought you had to send I thought you had to set notifications on your phone let me check because I would love to do that um, so do you all not get note? Do you all not get a notification in the morning when I go live? Like you, yeah. There should be a setting on your on your account for that. Um. Anyway, uh, Jason Meigs, good morning. Uh, trivia, Matt. Why wouldn't you be worried about a four three spread four three on spread offense when you know cover linebacker will be needed for the spread? Um, because I think you can run odd fronts and get the personnel on the field that you need. And I think LSU's got tons of fast linebackers. Think about Marcel Brooks. Marcel Brooks, 6'2", 194. I think he's plenty fast enough to be that linebacker. Play outside linebacker in that defense? Come on. Let's roll. In. Uh, Charlie, that's almost as good as my Black Friday story. In 2002, LSU lost to Arkansas. God, I was there. Miracle in Markham. Sitting in the press box listening while waiting to go on the air to broadcast Bird Rummel. Bird led, then Rummel tied it, goes to OT. Nick Child blocks the PAT to win it for the Raiders. 
Uh, and then the next week, um, Rummel and Catholic played at uh, at Memorial Stadium in Baton Rouge. And Rumble won an OT on one of the most unbelievable plays I've ever seen in my life where they fumbled a snap and Catholic like, had him sack, guy breaks free, rolls around, like scrambles, whoop de doops and runs around and then heaves just a lob into the ends of prayer and kid catches it. <clears throat> unbelievable. All right, let's see. Bubba Tatum, I get a notice every morning. Okay, good, 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 good. Good, thank you. A lot of y'all are saying you get the notice. That's good to know. Uh, if you like the show, it asks if you want notifications. Ah, that's what you got to do. So you got to like my page. There you go. Like my page, and I'll let you know. Uh, Jordan Giles. John Giles has me watching you for the first time. Head of the Rockwell, LG2 Restaurant Group, taking over six DQs in this area. Enjoy your versatile show. Thank you, Jordan. I appreciate that, man. Um, like the Brock page, set notifications, and join us every day here. All right, y'all. I got to roll now. It is 837. Uh, Locked on LSU coming up later today. Locked on LSU podcast. If you don't yet subscribe, please do so. Please like the Brock page. They're tagged in this post as always. And, of course, if you need an orthopedist, Brock. They're the best. Uh, and then AFR. Oh, right. Podcast today. AFR later today. you got a busy day. Tuesdays are busy. Busy, 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 busy. So we will see you then. Later, y'all. Have a good one. Peace.